welcome to my June wrap up. I'm going to be real with you guys. I didn't read any of these except one in June. They're all previous reads. I have been extremely busy writing my next book. However, they are amazing and I'm going to push them on you anyway. Wild Like Me by Louise Pentland. Uh, Louise is the YouTuber Sprinkle of Glitter who I've been watching since long before I came an author so I had to check this out. It's women's fiction but it's not really a romance novel. It's about a single mother trying to deal with loneliness, depression, becoming her own person, balancing motherhood and life and at times it is very raw and emotional and you can tell it came from a really real place for Louise and I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to be passing it on to a friend of mine who's a single mum and I just think it's an outstanding book for a YouTuber to have written. It is a non-fiction title of a Minds by Peter Godfrey Smith. This, I read a lot of non-fiction, but I tend to dip in and out of them, so I rarely finish them completely. So I'm going to try and include a few that I'm currently reading at the minute. Um, this one is about octopuses, as you might be able to tell from that glorious cover. It's a look at sort of how intelligence and evolution have changed the way different species think. So. I'm going to get really nerdy here. As you may or may not know, I studied science at university and I really miss it, so I tend to read a lot of science books. Um, basically, this is about how octopuses are as far from human brains as we're ever going to get, so they're the closest we're going to get to meeting aliens because the last point when we had a shared ancestor was like basically when we were worms in like the Cambrian explosion like hundreds of millions of years ago so they're completely different in almost every way and any similarities they have are literally a fluke and the thing the sh things that we share with them tell us a lot about our uh, how evolution changes brains because if they've evolved in common ways then that's an interesting sign anyway I'm going to stop before I tell you everything about this book as you can tell I really like it I keep telling everyone like weird anecdotes about the cool stuff I've learned there's lots of great uh, experiments that are explained that how they discovered this stuff about brains uh, so yeah I really enjoyed this one and a, lo a lot of it has gone into my next book as research because it was totally fascinating Pearl Thief by Elizabeth Wine this is the prequel to Codename Verity which was a massive bestseller which is about a spy in World War II being rescued by her friend who is a pilot. Uh, the sequel, the prequel, is set in the 1930s before the war uh, when Lady Julia uh, goes home to Scotland to help pack up her family's estate which is being sold off to pay her grandfather's debts after his death and while she's there that a man who works for them goes missing and she becomes friends with a boy and a girl from the Tinker family and they start to investigate this crime and I absolutely love this I think it's going to be one of my favorite books of the year it was ridiculously good it had everything I love like if you tried to write a book for me I'm not sure you could have done a better job than writing this one it's got like 30s detectives it's got like Harriet Vane references if you saw my May wrap up you'll know how much I love the Lord Peter Whimsy book and Lady Julia is a fan of them too. It's got Bronze Age marine archaeology which I am kind of writing about in my next book so that was amazing to find. It's got pearls, it's got buried treasure, it's got castles, it's got driving cherry red sports cars with girls. It's so good so definitely check that out. This is a YA book. Uh, the character's 15 but I think Codename Verity is on the older end of YA, so you can definitely read this as an adult. This isn't even a full book, it's literally just like a chapter sampler. But the cover is revealed for the Book of Dust book one, and Waterstones gave out a little sampler about it. And I am so excited that I had to include it in this video because, oh my god, I've been waiting for this since I was 13. I can remember reading The Northern Lights and demanding that my mum buy me the subtle knife and the amber spyglass immediately when we were on holiday and I have been obsessed with them ever since. They were a huge inspiration for my books and I'm so excited we're going to get a sequel. Ah, look at that cover! Anyway, 
you get the idea. This oh hi dog, I see you. <laughs> this one has a dog in the background. This is The Power by Naomi Alderman, which has just won the Bailey's Prize for Fiction 2017. So huge congratulations Naomi on that. It is a definitely worthwhile winner. Uh, this is a satirical science fiction dystopia book with a bit of fantasy thrown in. Handmaid's Tale if it was way more magical basically. So the idea is that suddenly every day women wake up and girls wake up with the power to shoot electricity from their hands which suddenly puts them in a, a huge position of power in society because they can overpower men and literally electrocute them with their hands whenever they want. And over the course of like I think a decade maybe more as uh, society shifts with females being the dominant sex and uh, it's a look at how patriarchal our society is and whether it would be a good thing if it was matriarchal instead. Spoilers, the answer is no. <laughs> Humans are terrible trash. <laughs> anyway, I really love this and it's a very worthwhile winner of the Bailey's Prize and I can't wait to read Naomi's previous books and check out what she does next. Out of all of these I would recommend reading this first if only just to be part of the cultural conversation uh, especially with Handmaid's Tale being on TV at the minute. It's a definitely a big one to read. Childhood by Cat Clark, which uh, has just been announced as one of the 2017 Zoella Book Club titles for WH Smith. And I'm so happy for Cat. This is the first book I've read of hers and I've already bought like three of us because it was so good. Uh, it's about a girl whose parents won the lottery on the same day that her twin sister died of anorexia. And she holds herself kind of responsible for her sister's death. So she uh, sent herself away to this expensive boarding school to be alone with her guilt. And there she makes a group of friends, uh, including her roommate, who is bisexual like she is. And when a new girl comes to the school and tries to join their friendship group, it gets very dark. It has been described as a queer Mallory Towers, and that's a perfect description. So this is False Lights by KJ Whitaker. Um, this is written by the YA author Katie Moran, and it's her first adult fiction title. And it's a alternate history set in the 19th century in a world where Napoleon won the Battle of Waterloo instead of Wellington. So London and England are under French control. Josephine is basically Queen of London and this is set in Cornwall where a girl called Hester, who's a mixed race girl, is taken prisoner by French soldiers. She escapes by capsizing their boat and gets rescued by an ex-soldier, ex-British soldier called Crow, who is very grouchy and suffering from a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder from the events of the war which we see in flashbacks of the Battle of Waterloo. So this story follows them as um, they have to get married to protect her honour which is great I love arranged marriage stories and one of my favourite storylines is about Wellington who is uh, in, trapped on the Isle of, of Skilly in Cornwall and Hester's childhood friend is a maid there and she helps him plot to overtake the new French monarchy in England. This is the first in a trilogy. I'm very excited to read the rest and I'm so proud of Katie for this. It's, she's done an intense amount of research. I had to look up a lot of new things that I hadn't heard about. There's lots of incredible historical research gone into this. This one isn't out until September. Truth or Dare by Non Pratt. This is a Walker book and as usual they do pretty amazing covers. So this is another young adult title. It's about a boy called Seth uh, and a girl called Claire. His brother has been injured jumping off a bridge and to raise money for his care in a hospice, Claire and Seth start a YouTube channel where they do bets in aid of charity and there's a bit of a romance along the way but there's an unreliable narrator. So the first half is told by Claire and the second half is told by Seth and they both have very different sides to the story. So, as usual, Non has created an incredibly diverse, beautifully written and researched and very emotionally aching YA book. Uh, there's an asexual character, there's lots of Muslim representation. This was a cracking read. Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. This is about 
a Chinese family now living in Singapore and they are basically billionaires they like own all of Singapore <laughs> and it's basically just an amazing romp through their lives it's been described as a bit like a retelling of Pride and Prejudice which I could see it, it's a very meandering retelling of Pride and Prejudice and you can tell the author really loves sort of extravagant design labels because there's a lot of name dropping of those in here I read this as research for a book I'm writing about billionaires. Is that a spoiler? Can I say that? I'm going to say it. I found this incredibly useful and I've already got the second one on my Kindle. Yeah, very extravagant. If you love reading about rich people with money, which I said in my last video is my thing at the minute, I'm doing it a lot for research. This is a great one. Days of Grace by Catherine Hall. I was sent this by Granta. This is a World War II story about an evacuee who was sent away to the countryside in England during the war is raised up to a different social class because of that and it follows her throughout her life there's two storylines one during the war and then one when she's sort of 1995 living alone uh, very isolated uh, and very hard read it's got an unhappy ending so warning for that it's been described as Sarah Waters meets Daphne du Maurier so if that sounds like your jam check this one out but yeah remember there's no happy ending ever <laughs> for anyone <laughs> everybody dies <laughs> the accidental life of jesse jefferson i was sent this by simon and schuster in preparation for yauk the schedule for that hasn't been announced yet so i'm not going to tell you why keep an eye out for that um so this is a uh, page tunes first young adult novel and this is a spin-off from one of her adult fiction duologies about a pop star and the girl who falls for him and this is about um, the daughter of the pop star who finds out when her mum dies that she is in fact the daughter of a pop star <laughs> and goes to stay with him and his new family in LA and gets sprung into this Hollywood world of cute boys in boy bands and parties and money and basically it's just about her adventures. I really enjoyed that this could have been a simple romance novel but it looks like there's going to be a story of her becoming a singer in her own right in the rest of the trilogy. I, have, I really want Jessie to be a pop star. <laughs> I've like become very obsessed with this. I think she's a real character and I really want to see her blossom and become the amazing strong female character that she is in her own right. Okay, that is it for June. As I said, I didn't read many of these because I am doing a lot of writing. I'm about 10,000 words away or two chapters away from the end of my fifth novel which will be published by Walker next year. I'm basically hyperactive, super excited about it all the time because I'm so close to the end and I've done all of the hard work and I now get to like enjoy the payoff of writing the last bit and seeing it all come together and seeing my characters have their happy endings or unhappy endings no spoilers and yeah really having a good time at the minute uh, so yeah hope you're having a good June and I will talk to you more in July bye